Canada. Well, that didn't work. Hello everyone, I'm Karius, and today I'm going to be giving you a short review of these NF Strike light take grenade things. They're meant for water BBs or airsoft BBs, but we found out that you can put rival balls in them. And of course, you've seen several videos from Walcom and Drac and Captain Xavier and TK1138 and all kinds of people messing with these. Um, and I just wanted to. Do a quick video about them. I'll take one apart and show you how it works and show you some interesting things that I've done with them. So, as you can see, when the thing deploys, it is these three spring loaded flaps. It's just these torsion springs. And there is this little weighted pin here that is actually holding these in place when the thing is closed. And then, of course, the hammer handle thing holds the pin in place so that it can't get knocked around. So when it's closed and the hammer's down, it won't explode. But if there's no pin here, the slightest knock will, will move this little weighted ball and lift it off of all three of these catches. So you can see there's little notches here, and those are being caught onto this retention pin. And then when all three are in place and you put the hammer down, it stays closed. And all it takes is a little knock. And it opens. Now there are a couple problems with this thing. It works beautifully with rival balls, um, but if you haven't noticed, it's a fairly hefty chunk of plastic and this is not something you're going to be wanting to throw at people especially in a Nerf War where there's little kids involved if you hit somebody in the head with this they're not going to be happy so it's borderline useless for our standard purposes and I think in fact the SNC is not allowing the use of these as is because they're just I mean it's, it's a brick that you're gonna that you're expected to throw and we can't we can't guarantee that nobody's gonna get hit in the head by one of these. So let's take a look inside. Time lapse, go. That's gotta be a faster way. So you take these three screws out the top with an Allen wrench or a drill like I just did, and this whole piece comes off. You've got this thing attached to the catch for all three of these panels that kind of come in through these slots. And if you lift it, the whole thing opens up because it's got these three catches going to these three notches. <laughs> now also, as you may have just noticed, the top part holds on the spring-loaded flaps, which just slot in here real simply. Let me find the other one. I found it. Okay. So the back of this also has three screws, and all those do is separate this back piece from the center, which allows you to take these three flaps out. Um, there's also a little cap that goes in the back of this, um, and that's only for unscrewing to then pour airsoft BBs or water BBs into it, but since we're using this for Nerf, we don't even need the cap, and I just leave it out. And there's the grenade. 
So since this is a really fun little gizmo, but I can't really throw it at people because it's just not safe, how do I make it usable in an Air 4? Well, the first thought everybody has is to put foam all over it, but it's kind of silly. It's still a really heavy projectile, and the foam is, no matter how you do it, it's going to interfere with the activation of the grenade. Um, you'll end up with these big foam panels coming off of this thing, and um, it might even dampen the impact enough so that it might not properly explode when it hits something. So that's kind of a bust, and it just makes the whole it would just make the whole thing bulky and silly anyway for for something that's not even really that good of an explosion. So one thing you'll notice pretty quickly when you're using these little grenades is that they're extremely directional. Um, just because of the nature of these flaps, all three of them are pointed toward the top of the grenade, and where it doesn't matter where the grenade lands or how it lands, most of the projectiles will try to go towards the top of the grenade. So it's more like a directional shotgun charge type thing than it is a um, good 360 degree blast. And that got me thinking, what if I just kind of stuck a handle on this and made a goofy... Oh, this is kind of important. What if I just stuck a handle on this and made kind of a goofy grenade pistol? Because then I could actually use it and it would take advantage of the very directional shotgun style nature of this thing. So I started looking at the well, let's put this together. So I started looking at how this thing is constructed and trying to come up with a way to engage this pin from an external mechanism. And I ended up realizing that there's nothing important in the grenade throughout the entire center of it. And it's actually very easy to drill a hole straight down all the way to the pin. And what that allows you to do is to engage the pin with a long rod like a screwdriver. So then the only challenge was getting some kind of mechanism to where I could pull a trigger push a rod through the back of it, and blow it up. And I could use that little cap that goes in the bottom as a coupler for whatever device I come up with. So I decided I liked that idea too much to let it go, and I just got to work looking through parts bins and finding what I could actually use. Sure these are tightened up. And here's what I came up with. What we have here is half a Maverick with this little pokey brass thing. And when you pull the trigger, it moves forward. And right here is what used to be the cap that goes in the back of the grenade. And now you can just screw this on on here pretty solid. You could even still put the pin in it if you don't want it to be activated. But while it's ready, you just pull the trigger and it explodes. And the force of the blast knocks it right off the coupler and you can just drop it. And this works fantastically. Um, and since I used this coupler to kind of temporarily attach it, I can buy more grenades, drill that simple hole in the back, and remove the cap, and they're just already compatible. And of course I have like four more grenades on the way to my house once I realized I could do that. So those are coming. So let's take a look at how I did this, because it's kind of neat. A lot of custom tiny mechanisms. And I added this little thing just for cosmetics. 
but it turns out it actually um, serves as a place to put the pin too when I'm not using it. I can just slip the pin over the back of the site and then lock it back in place and it just kind of hangs there. So that's kind of neat, but completely accidental. I was really just going for a cosmetic piece. Alright, so we've got just five screws. Pretty easy to open up. Oh. Four screws. Because there are a decent number of screw posts removed from this. Funny story, this Maverick used to be one of the ones that was torn apart for the um, Maverick modding contest that happened at Endwar. And I just had a bunch of... I ended up snagging a couple of those because they were kind of busted up and nobody wanted them. And I used them for handles for things because the Maverick handle is super comfy. Alright, so here is what I came up with. We've got this little piece of metal attached to the trigger, braced against what used to be a screw post and now is this piece of brass that I have a bolt through because the uh, plastic screw post just wasn't enough to handle the tension and as you push it it's kind of hard to do it when it's not all put together but as you push it, it braces up against that and then this thing which has which goes through this hole that has been drilled all the way through the Maverick rotation, cylinder, rotation Mac and the cap and everything goes out all the way out to here, which is about where the pin for the grenade ends up. And you just end up pulling the trigger, it goes forward, and engages the grenade. Put the spring here. Um, these two pieces actually came from the priming bar from a busted Duminator that I ended up cutting in half and using. And then it was just a little bit too short, and I grafted on this piece of brass tubing to get the rest of the length I needed. The rotation mech is just sitting in here without its springs or anything. It's really just there to center this bar. And of course, I use the original Maverick trigger and the trigger spring. Everything else is gutted out of there. So it looks pretty simple. It took a while to put together and figure out, but I'm pretty happy with it. So let's put this back together and do some firing demonstrations. All right, so I've loaded it to its maximum capacity of 15 rival rounds. We'll see what it does. <laughs> All right, so that went in about went about 20 feet in front of me in every direction. So, I mean, if you're right on top of somebody, you're going to hit them, but don't expect it to be a like a longer range shotgun. Let's try it with fewer balls and see what happens. Okay, so this time I've loaded it up with six, which is a lot easier to load. Seems to be stressing the grenade a lot less. And I think we'll get better range out of this setup with six rival rounds. Well, it's a little better. Um, it's about 30 foot range the spread just directly in front of you. Maybe closer to 20 still, but definitely farther than the first shot, but a spread that was much more concentrated forward, so it worked better as like a last ditch shotgun. I think I'm going to try it with 9 and see what happens there. So for our final test, I've got 9 rival rounds loaded in it, and we'll see if we get an improvement or if it decreases the range. I'd say that actually worked better. Um, the range was about the same as the six shots, but it had a larger spread. So I think, I think your happy medium is nine rival balls if you're wanting to use this as kind of a close range shotgun pistol. So yeah, works pretty good. Now what you end up with here is a little shotgun pistol that will spray 9 or 12 rival rounds, depending on how many you load, about 20 to 30 feet in front of you. And it's just ridiculously fun.
if you actually have multiple grenades and you can reload it, it might actually even be a decent um, holdout pistol. Because there's no way you're going to miss at close range with this thing. Another thing that this would be really good for is getting people around corners. So you know somebody's bunkered behind something, you can just reach your arm around with this, pull the trigger, and there's no way you're going to miss them because it's just the hemisphere in front of the pistol. <laughs> Of course you have the, what the hell is that factor of pulling out half a Maverick with a grenade attached to it, which is half of why I even make mods, is to get funny reactions from people who were just completely confused as to what I just pulled out. Now I've tried loading this grenade up with darts and half darts and boomco darts and a bunch of different stuff, and nothing works quite as well as rival balls. I've also tried loading different numbers of rival balls in it. Um, I find that three is kind of useless, one in each chamber. They go pretty much 180 degrees from the grenade, and you won't really hit anything. Six makes a good shotgun blast, but Actually, six, is, 6 does really well. The only reason I don't do 6 is because 9 gets the same range and has 3 extra shots. Because for some reason, you get the same performance, it seems, with 6 balls and 9 balls. 12 is when it starts to kind of lose range and the spread isn't quite as good. You have more projectiles, but your range isn't as good. And 15 um, really taxes the grenade and doesn't seem to spread nearly as well. Like, it loses some of the elasticity just because it's so cramped. It's just really weird. They don't go nearly as far as they do with 9 balls. So I usually stick to 9. And it's a lot easier to load 9 than it is 15 anyway. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this look at my little grenade pistol. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. I will see you in the next video. And until then, this has been Carius reminding you to have fun.